with Merkava 4, what is taken to the utmost is protection. Protection is the absolute key. There is no equivalent like this anywhere in the world. The engine acts as another piece of armor. You probably heard how Merkava is the best tank in the world. How its design is so unique and good that no tank can match it. Well, that is far from the truth, and today we are going to look at some of the problems of Merkava. Merkava MK4 to be exact, since that is the most modern variant currently in service. First and foremost, the engine of the tank is in the forward compartment of the vehicle. Why? Well, Back when the tank was designed, composite armor wasn't really a thing, and Israel wasn't really a rich superpower like United States. So, in order to increase the protection of the tank, they decided to put the engine in the front. That also freed up space in the back for additional ammunition, or even infantry. So, they could make Merkava into a personnel carrier. But they had to get rid of most of the ammunition, well, they still do, in order to fit the men inside. So, what's the problem? Today, with thermal imaging systems and very powerful APVSDS projectiles, the engine does more bad than it does good. Since the engine is in front, the tank's thermal signature is significantly increased. As you can see, all tanks have a lower thermal signature on front and higher on the back. That's because the engine heats up the steel around it. And for Merkava, it's the other way around. It has lower signature on the back than it does on the front. I don't know about you, but I'm yet to see tanks going into battle backwards. Another problem with that is that it is literally used as protection, which means it can easily get damaged and leave the tank stuck. But don't get confused, engine offers irrelevant amount of protection against modern APVSDS projectiles, basically non-existent. Only protection it can offer is against hollow charge munitions. Some sources even state that since the engine heats up, it can obscure the thermal vision of the gunner, so in order to see clearly the gunner needs to turn the turret away from the engine, keep in mind that in the day channel it wouldn't cause any issues. But I can see it being a problem from the thermal camera. But I wasn't able to find any solid confirmation, so take this with a pinch of salt. Another issue with the engine, yeah I know, is that there is a fuel tank directly in front of it, which can catch fire and heat up the engine enough for it to stall. So you don't even have to hit the engine to damage it. The worst part is that the fuel tank is located directly behind the lower front plate, which is around 100mm thick. So basically every projectile in use can penetrate that, with no issues in the slightest. But keep in mind that Merkava does have automatic fire extinguisher. But I wouldn't be talking about this if it didn't happen, there have been instances of the fuel tank catching fire with fire extinguisher failing, which led to the tank being immobilized. Although it's a rare occasion, truth to be told, it is still not impossible to occur and should be mentioned. Another problem is that Merkava does not have any blowout panels or anything similar like M1 Abrams or Leopard 2 do. It has 10 pieces of ammunition in the mechanized ready rack, and 38 pieces in the hull, where infantry can be situated if the projectiles are removed. Where each projectile is in the protective bin, which gives the crew enough time to escape if the ammo catches fire. That is the only safety procedure implemented. It is far behind modern standards. Now the armor design, which leaves a lot to be desired. As I already mentioned, lower front plate is only about 100mm thick, with the fuel tank, engine and the armor wall behind it. In total, the protection doesn't exceed 300 to 400mm against APV SDS, which is very poor for modern standards. The upper front plate isn't badly protected, the entire composition is 200mm thick, sloped at 75 degrees. But keep in mind, no composition is as strong as solid or homogeneous armor of the same thickness, so it's not 200mm of raw homogeneous steel at 75 degrees, that is just the thickness. So, if we take that composite armor is made to stop heat, together with the engine compartment and the armored wall behind it, it should be enough to stop 80 GMs like Conkers. 
and handheld launcher fire like the one from RPG-29. But there is no way it's enough to stop modern APVSDS projectiles, or even more powerful ATGMs such as Cornet M. The problem with the hull design is that, although upper front plate is not all that bad, it's still extremely sloped, and the lower front plate takes up much of the space of the front armor. The turret armor design is very weird, it is extremely sloped in both ways. This means that armor is most effective in the center, but it gets weaker the further you go from it. It is most probably good against heat projectiles, but there is no information on its effectiveness. Also, the armor appears to be fragile, so the hits in a similar area can damage it, but that is not that important since the chances of it getting struck in the same spot are highly, highly unlikely. And the tank has the same problem as Abrams that I mentioned in my video. It still uses the L44 gun, where better L55 is readily available and has 10 to 15% better penetration with the same APFSDS projectiles compared to L44. Ok, now most of the protection issues are fixed with the implementation of Trophy Active Protection System, which is really, really good. It makes any heat or ATGM a thing of the past. But that still doesn't change the fact that the arm design is not that good. You can mount a trophy on any tank and you will have similar outcome. Engine in the front really gives away the tank in thermal system, and the firepower, while not bad in any way, it could still use an upgrade. Keep in mind that the point of this video is to point out the tank's flaws. This isn't a general review. Keep that in mind when you type those angry comments. That would be all. Thanks a lot for watching. If you like my content, you can support me on Patreon, and if you want to chat or have some questions, join my Discord server. Both links are in the description. And I will see you all in the next video. Have a nice day.